it's Ben. Welcome. So I wanted to install Alexa on the Raspberry Pi. Um, it's not exactly something I would do as a cost-effective measure, uh, meaning you can buy an Echo Dot on sale for 15 to 30 bucks. But if you have a Raspberry Pi and you want to fool around and have some fun and learn how it, uh, kind of uh, cloud integration works in Amazon with the Raspberry Pi, this is a fun project. It takes a few hours. A lot of that time is spent um, with downloading, uh, really more configuring a lot of the software, but you have to download quite a few things. And um, with wget, curl, uh, it, it's pretty impressive. Alrighty, I just wanted to show you, this is the little Canna Kit uh, micro SD reader. And um, what you do is check out that here's the little memory stick. If I can get it out of here, it's so small. It's my 128 meg, uh, excuse me, gig memory stick that sits in the Raspberry Pi in here. It's the hard drive for the Raspberry Pi. It goes into a little slot. What you do is you just put it into this little USB. So you put the kind of the gold side in so it's touching those little, see, you know, standard USB. For me, I plug it into this adapter for the Mac and it's got a lightning drive. I plug it in, it's a thumb drive. And that's how I offloaded all the data or will offload the data. And then when I'm done and I want to get it running again, I just take it, put it in the little slot, click it on in, and then uh, oh, I kind of spun it around and then we just power it on and off it goes. Super, super simple, right? Sweet. Pro SD card in my little um, holder and it's plugged into my Mac. And um, if I do like a disk free uh, dash, say human readable, it shows the file systems. Notice down here, disk three uh, slash volumes recovery and boot. That is the memory stick. That's my drive and boot sector, boot section um, from the Raspberry Pi. So now that I've identified it, I have it in my memory here, and uh, you select your disk here, and I'm going to call it raspbian.image. So I created that. I'll just control C out of that. And then that took a while to create. Once I was created, it's a you know 128 gig um, uh, file. It's it's big. So what you do is you then want to tar it up. And this is tape archiving. Um, create um, uh, a, a tar, and you want to gzip it, a verbose file. And then here's Here's what I want to call it, raspbian.image.tar, and I'm making it from this raspbian.image, which we made in the previous command right here. Ignore that C. So basically, you just want to zip that up, and it comes out being about 10 gigs. So very important to back it up. So here are the commands that I typed um, to make this work. It doesn't show the config files, and I'm not uh, going to go through all of these. I will post... Uh, the links to the sites that I use that are on um, AWS. Um, you have to create a developer account and then, you know, it's like here's getting different software, uh, streaming plugins, just, uh, there's just a lot. You know, you create directory structures, you know, SDK folders and install a lot of things, so forth and so on. Um, the thing that does take a lot of the time are these makes. Some of these are very long because you're doing a whole Git repository of things and it has to build. So here's the main site that I used. Uh, it is the uh, developer.amazon.com. I'll put this link in uh, the description. But basically it's a Raspberry Pi quick start guide. And um, I am actually running a Debian Buster, a version of that. And it worked, obviously. If not, you can click here and it will give you a link to three different versions. Um, this looks like the best option, I think, is the Raspberry Pi operating system with desktop and recommended software. Uh, I do not think you want to try to freestyle it. I mean, you could, but you're going to spend a lot of time grabbing packages. So don't highly recommend that. Um, so here's the kind of the hardware and software requirements. You need a quad core. I think the certainly I have a Pi 4, Pi 3 would work. Uh, you maybe want to check the specs if you're not sure. Um, some other details on how much storage you need, how much RAM. 
again, the operating system, uh, uh, different browsers. Um, additional required hardware. Okay, yeah, so you need a power cable, some of the obvious things. And then there's a, the product overview, and that's really a procedure overview. And then you just jump right into it down here. It's good to know what version of operating system you're running. Um, more Etsy OS release will give you that. I am running Buster. Uh, this is on that development page, this command, if you can't find it or forget what it is. Um, you really probably have to go with the version they want. So basically, after it's installed, you go to the web page, um, which is local. It's uh, an index.html page. And I have it set up with this rather kooky mic setup. But um, you hold down A and say, um, Alexa, what's the weather? Currently, in Cambridge, it's 43 degrees Fahrenheit with partly sunny skies. Mm -hmm. You can expect more of the same today with a high of 47 Pretty degrees neat, right? and a low of 31 degrees. You, thank you. You don't need to say Alexa. You do have to hold down the A button. It's not like an Alexa device you have at home. I don't know why it's defaulting to that. I haven't really fiddled much with it. But um, it, it's a little limited in what you can do. You can't really um, have it just sort of stream music. But you can, you know, have it do things like um, tell me a joke. And down here it shows a status, thinking, listening, the idle. The walks into a bar. The bartender says, I'm going to serve you a drink named after you. The grasshopper responds, you have a drink named Steve? But um boom tsh. That's a good old one. I hope you could hear that. Uh, classic Alexa humor. Okay, I thought this was fun. Um, it's, it's dense when you're doing it, uh, but very cool.